Hey, it's Jay, and I'm over at my buddy Steven's house, and we're here trying to put in some under cabinet lighting, and it has been quite the project. It really because has. <laughs> First we installed a section, and I'm gonna show you that in a second, but then I brought the footage home, and all of the files that we had filmed that day were corrupt on the flash card. Corrupt flash drive? No! All the files, all the shooting that we had done, completely eradicated. Yeah, and they wanted like $2,000 to fix it. <laughs> And he had some issues going on with his house. Yeah. Some flooding. Yeah. We <laughs> so actually we... flooded the house. It's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, and thankfully we have two sections of the kitchen, so we were able to do almost all of the first section, and then my house flooded. And so we had to put <laughs> it on hold. <laughs> and then we have another section. So it worked out really well for you guys. Let's get started. When Steven moved into this house, he had wiring pre-installed for his under cabinet lighting. So all we have to do is just solder on these light strips. We're using an inspired LED, and when we solder these on, we're able to connect it in, and the wires flow up to a transformer. Uh, the transformer is a magnetic transformer that steps down the voltage from 110 to 12 volts. That transformer connects into the switch, and we're putting dimmer switches on these. These are dimmable LEDs, and the nice part about it is they're coming strips every few inches there's actually a little connector and you can cut right here and cut the LED strips the length that you want and then there's a nice sticky on the back we solder right to these little terminals here notice that we already did three full sections of this and we still have plenty uh, on the wheel left for other projects it also comes with power cords today since it's pre-wired we're actually going to be soldering but um, it actually comes with power cords so you can hook it up just about anywhere in your house it's really convenient let me just give you a little quick summary of what's going on behind the scenes you have 110 volts of alternating current coming into your home it goes into your circuit breaker and the circuit breaker is there to protect you from fires. If too much current is flowing through any given circuit in your house at any given time, a breaker will pop. From the circuit breaker, we have 110 volts of alternating current going into a switch. In this case, it's a Lutron MLV switch. MLV stands for magnetic low voltage. This type of dimmable switch is meant to work with dimmable LED lights. And I have these in my house as well, but I have the Caseta series, which uh, works with Alexa. From the switch, the 110 volts of alternating current moves into the transformer. In the transformer, it's stepped down to 12 volts of direct current. The reason we need to step down the voltage is because if we send too much current into the LED light strips, or actually into the wires that lead down to the under cabinet lights, then they can burn up. Uh, it could be a fire hazard. The LED lights require so little energy that we're able to step it down to 12 volts. As it flows from the transformer over to the LED strips, it's actually direct current here. It's a consistent loop and instead of cycling back and forth like this, which alternating current does, it just flows in one direction through the loop. So in short, electricity flows into your house, which goes into your circuit breaker box, then it goes into your switch. When your switch is turned on, electricity flows into your magnetic transformer. The magnetic transformer steps down the voltage to 12 volts, flows direct current through your light strips, back into your transformer, steps back up to 110 volts, and then boom, boom, back to your circuit breaker, and it completes the cycle. Steven actually ordered two different types of switches, but they're both magnetic LED dimmers, which work well with the transformer. So everything's linked below, um, but you wanna make sure that your switches match up with the transformer, um, or else it won't work properly. Here's our under cabinet wire and what we're going to do is we're going to cut off a little bit because we have a uh, section in between right here. There will be a strip of lights here and a strip of lights there. Having the right tools always helps no matter what project you do. These are just some basic generic wire strippers. You can smell that soldering iron warming up. Oh, <laughs> smell the napalm in the morning. Perfect. Steven's doing a great job here. Just getting the end off. Perfect. Let's uh, measure out the length of our strip first, and then once we have it, then we'll solder these wires to it, and we should be good to go. So as you can see, Steven's just holding it up, and what he has to do is just gauge. So here's the cutter right there. Where the cutter is. And then also notice that these are different lengths. So I've got a shorter cabinet here, 
and the longer cabinet here and that's why it's nice that these are every four inches you can cut them. So we're gonna make sure we get the right strip. Make sure we get the amount of light that we want. So this one, when they piece this together too, they actually solder it together, um, how they spool the spool together. So we're just gonna cut right over those solder marks and we'll actually be able to use that solder as well when we're soldering, so that's kind of cool. Okay, we're just about ready to solder and it's actually good to have a buddy when you do this because you need extra hands. Uh, so Steven's holding the solder there because we've set it up so that white is gonna be with positive and red is gonna be with negative on the terminal here. You wanna make sure you're consistent throughout your whole set and then when you hook it up in your transformer, you're consistent as well. So Steven is doing a good job of just getting a little bit of solder in there, just let it cool. And when you're soldering, you wanna make sure that your um, your two terminals aren't touching in any way. Yep. So we're soldered here. All right, let's do the next one. All right, we're ready to go. So we're gonna stick these up. Um, the nice thing about them is it just has a little peel off sticker here. And what I do is just kind of get the whole thing kind of set up and centered first. And then I only peel off just a little bit. And I'm putting it towards the front so it's a little harder to see. And I stick on the first part. I'm glad you're doing this and not me. <laughs> and then I just kind of use the uh, line of the cabinet as a reference to try and keep it straight as I put it on. Right, we've located the spot. In Stephen's house, there happens to be two boxes in this cabinet, one on this side and one on the other side here. And those boxes are where the switch, the 110 volt switch comes in. And we're gonna put in a transformer. Okay, this is a magnitude lighting transformer. And on one side, you have the wires that hook into the switch. That's 110 volts. And on the other side, you have wires that are gonna hook into your low voltage lighting. You always have to make sure that the power is off. So we're going to go over to the garage and turn off everything. After a little trial and error, we found that it's actually 15. So I'm going to tell Steven to mark this in his box. 15. All right, let's check this again. All right, we're good. What I picked up at the store for Steven is some clamp connectors. And these are good to just install right on the box like this. So when the wires come through and into here, you can clamp them down and it doesn't pinch the wires. You don't have to worry about wires getting damaged in any way. I appreciate that, man. Thanks. No problem. I've just taken this box out completely and we're going to use this as our new box right here. So let's run the switch side in, the 110 first. You always want to twist clockwise from the top looking down because that's the way the wire nut goes on. And just give it a little tug and make sure it's tight. So that one wasn't tight enough, so I'm just gonna do it again. These are the three sections of underneath the cabinets. Just have to expose the wires and then we're gonna wire them all in on these two wires here. That's where it gets a little tight in here. So how do you know which lines to connect which to? 
Okay, so down below we just ended up picking a side and it really doesn't matter down below as long as we're consistent. But here on this, it says 12 volts DC. It says red is positive and blue is negative. All right, so if we go back down and check, we dedicated negative as red down below. So my reds are gonna go on the blue and my whites are actually gonna go on the red. Now what I'm going to do is just go on the outside and tighten these up. Yeah, we'll actually try to use the same holes. Yep. Beautiful. And look, it lines right up. So we have the hot wire and then we have the load wire. And I don't know honestly which is which and then this is the ground wire. Um, but the nice thing about the Lutron switch is that you can hook it up in any way you want and it's not gonna matter which side is which. Oh. <laughs> it seems though when the builders painted this house, all the electric fixtures were exposed. So they painted in all the electric boxes and therefore they painted all the wires. So I'm scraping off this and it's giving us better contact so when we actually attach the ground it'll do its job i also did a lutron caseta dimmer switch series uh video so i'm going to link that right in the top let's see right over there and that's if you want to hook everything up with alexa and have voice controlled switches in your house in this case uh steven just he just wanted to be able to dim things and um it's it's a super effective way. Um, they're still Lutron switches, so they work really well. It's the top switch on the market. Lutron, in my experience, has, made it, has had amazing customer service, and every time I've called, they've um, stayed on the line with me until they've been able to answer all my questions. They're just really great. For a normal switch, there's enough gap and you just leave the fins on, but if you had another Lutron dimmer switch, then it would overlap, so you'd have to take these off on this side. See how there's not quite enough space if another one was here? Mm -hmm. Yep, oh. just switch it over. There it is. Oh my goodness. Yeah, look throughout. <laughs> Take pan around, you can see. Well, Here, do uh, you want to go up and down? Right, there we go. Nice device. dimmer, nice Make even sure dimmer. <laughs> That's right, you got to get the vitamins. <laughs> cool. Awesome. Wow. All right, this side is done. Very <laughs> cool. It's really awesome. Cool. See, when I'm cooking and I got the wine going, like setting the mood. It's <laughs> bonus points. I appreciate it, Jay. It's important with the wife. Yeah. <laughs>
Our eyes can pick up a maximum of 80 hertz. So in the US, we use alternating current at 60 hertz. You're getting 120 maximums per second. So our eyes don't pick up a flicker. In the case of a camera though, it works differently. Let me show you. I shot this video in 24 frames per second. 24 still pictures are taken per second with my camera. So here's an example, me and Steven in the kitchen. This is one frame of 24 frames in one second. Keep that in mind for the next whiteboard. In order for the camera to capture that frame, it opens and closes a shutter, which is like blinking your eyes. And the shutter speed is how long the shutter is open before it closes again to capture that one frame. So what I've done here is just kind of shown you the perspective of how long the shutter is open. This would be considered a long exposure, 1 over 30. That means that in that one frame, in this case, I'm shooting in 24 frames per second, so it's 1 24th of a second that this entire bar is occurring in. The green part represents how long the shutter is open. And this is for like really low light. And if you keep the shutter open for just a little bit longer, it'll capture enough light to create an image. It's sometimes blurry because this is open so long, which doesn't seem that long, but it's open so long that movement can occur and create blurriness in that fraction of a 1 24th of a second. So just to reiterate, this is when the shutter is open and this is when it's closed, all for just one frame. And this happens 24 times per second. If you're working with a lot of light, your shutter is going to be open for even less time. The shutter has to open for such a small fraction of a second to get a really clear picture. The transformer we're using is a constant voltage driver, which means that through the LED loop, it's 12 volts at all times. If we look at our physics equation, power equals current times voltage, the voltage is constant. So in order to decrease the power or dim the lights, the current has to decrease. In order to bring down the current, the LED driver or the transformer uses something called a pulse width modulation or PWM. What that means is the driver controls the amount of time the circuit's on and off to regulate the amount of current. For example, if Steven's under cabinet lights are on all the way and not dimmed at all, then it doesn't pulse at all. But if Steven decides to dim his lights down to about 50%, what the driver does is it starts to pulse the amount of current that goes through the circuit and it's on for half the time and off for half the time. On, off, on, off, on, off. And then even lower, if he dims it and the lights are on about 25%, and so it's 75% dimmed, then the lights are only on for 25% per cycle and they're off for 75% of the cycle. And it does this cycle about 100 to 300 times per second. So to our eyes, we don't pick up the flicker, but to a camera, it's a different story. Remember back to the shutter speed part where we said that if there's a lot of light, the shutter is open for a very, very small amount of time. So in that one frame of 24 frames per second, the shutter is open for a minuscule amount of time and it captures the image in that little instant. So in the conclusion, this pulse is occurring faster than we can pick up with our eyes. But a camera is capturing still frames and it happens to be capturing still frames when the light is turned off. So there's your answer of why it flickers. It's the on and off pulses of the dimmed LEDs.